Ten. Take Studio. Seven, six, Stomach five, camera one, mice four, one and two. Three, two, one. Take Studio. Hello and welcome to another episode of MCTV News. I'm your host, Will Compo. And I'm Luke Robinson. On today's show, we will take a look at our Mournful Fire Department, the effects of CTS renovations on CTS courses, harmony in the workplace, our MCHS custodial staff, but first, here's our top story. With another week added to winter break, exam week was cancelled and caused teachers to, be, to schedule exams to be in class. I was able to ask staff members at MCHS about the possible interference with learning as well as the posi positive outcomes. With exam week being cancelled and getting replaced with in-class exams, I was able to ask a few teachers at MCHS about how this affects learning in classrooms. This new system, I feel like, does not um, impose a lot of accountability into the students. With final exams, I think it's really good because it gives the kids some rigor um, and they have accountability in terms of having to make sure that they really have that, those concepts uh, down pat and understood. Um, with this new system of finals um, and that there's really no pressure, I finding, I'm finding that kids um, are okay with their marks and so therefore they're not putting a lot of effort into studying for those final exams. I think it's been very strange this year. It's a little bit different. I teach English and so we have more time in the course to be able to do things like this. I know some of the other courses they're running out of time to finish teaching the curriculum so having to fit a final exam in the same time is really difficult. But in, in English, it's been okay. We've had the time to do it. I don't know if the finals affect learning. It's more just the situation that we're in, obviously, with COVID and all these bad weather days and things that students are missing class. It takes away from their opportunities to work with a teacher and get the information and the background and the skills that they need to be successful on exams. I was also able to ask the teachers if they believed that this would benefit the students and why. Uh, this new system I do not in the long term will benefit uh, the students, especially if students want to go off into post-secondary education. Um, again, this system is not really imposing that accountability and that academic rigor that they'll see in universities. I think that right now, even though our final exams can't affect our marks uh, unless your mark goes up, it's still really beneficial to go through the experience of writing an exam because we're not done with our educational careers yet. You're going to face exams at some point and we want you to be well practiced. It's definitely beneficial for students. The bottom line for me is it's the kids need to have these skills so they can move to the next level, right? So regardless of whether you have finals, it might, not, it might benefit them this year, but if they didn't develop the skills and the knowledge that they need to go on to the next level, then it won't benefit them in the future. For more information on in-class scheduling for final exams, ask your teacher. For MCTV News, Will Compo reporting. Welcome back. With warmer temperatures blessing Morinville over the weekend, here's MCTV's very own meteorologist, Josie Lapointe, to tell us if they're here to stay. Okay, so in Whitehorse it's zero degrees and Vancouver we're at six. Yellowknife and Regina are negative 10 and negative 16. Winnipeg is negative 23. Iqaluit is negative 25. <laughs> okay, St. John's is negative one. Halifax is two. Halifax is two degrees. And it's, um, it's really warm. Lots of snow and some rain. High level is zero degrees. Fort McMurray is zero. 
Grand Prairie is four degrees, Edmonton is four degrees, Jasper is two degrees, Red Deer, Calgary, and Medicine Hat are zero degrees, six degrees, and three degrees, and Banff is zero degrees. Okay, current conditions. It's one degrees, wind is 13 kilometers an hour, relative humidity 86, sunrise is at 8.32 a.m., sunset is at 5.02 p.m. Um, seven day forecast, Wednesday, high of one degrees and a low of negative nine. Thursday, high of negative two and a low of negative 12. Friday is a high of zero and negative 10. Saturday is negative one and negative four. Sunday is negative one, negative 13. Monday is negative 13, negative 18. And Tuesday is negative 17 and negative 22. Back to you guys. Thanks, Josie. Next up, reporter Matthias Kidd was given the opportunity to bring us a report that's straight heat, giving us a look into the a day in the life of the Morinville Fire Department. Morinville Fire Department has been serving the community for many years. This fire department has especially been one that the community enjoys. I went there and interviewed Lieutenant Nash to see on his thoughts his favorite thing and his least favorite thing about working at the fire department. Prevention officer here for the town of Morinville and I represent the safety codes council and the fire discipline. Um, so we take everything for from the Alberta fire code and we try and enforce it and educate the people in the town and the different businesses and occupancies on how to be safe and compliant with the fire code. I'm the fire prevention officer here for the town of Morinville and I represent the safety codes council and the fire discipline. Um, so we take everything for from the Alberta fire code and we try and enforce it and educate the people in the town and the different businesses and occupancies on how to be safe and compliant with the fire code. I then asked Lieutenant Nash his role and his education to get into the position he is in today. Um, I also took uh, architecture in Nate a few years ago and uh, then I've taken uh, fire investigation uh, and I've taken fire inspections through the uh, national NFPA, uh, the Nation National Fire Protection Agency. This is my year seven as a firefighter. I've worked in the oil field for many years and uh, also have a contracting company um, and work in the construction industry. So I'm familiar with buildings and codes and that sort of. One final question. I asked Lieutenant Nash what he would say to a community member who had thoughts on joining the, the position, the same position Lieutenant Nash has, and what he would say to that person. Uh, I'd say it's a, it's a, it's a niche job. Um, not many people do it. Um, it's, uh, it's rewarding um, helping out other people and, and teaching them to be compliant or uh, helping them be safe and prevent any accidents or emergencies. Um, prevention is, like I say, we don't want anybody getting hurt. Um, that, that's, that's why I got into the business is to help out. And now as we've experienced the life a day in the life of a firefighter, we know that it could be interesting. This could certainly be a job for many students and many children who have the interest in. The fire department is always serving the community of Mournville. For MCT, Matthias Kidd. Here are your school announcements for Tuesday, January the 25th. Attention all grads. Grad photos will be taking place Monday, January 31st. Please remember to book your appointment ASAP. If you have any questions, please see Ms. Booten in Student Services. Our last day of Semester 1 is on Wednesday, January the 26th, leading us into exam break. Make sure to bring in your textbooks to the library, semester two, and Semester 2 begins on the 1st of February. The last day to switch classes is on the 7th of February. See Student Services to make those changes. For these and all other school information, keep connected by listening to the daily announcements, logging into the school's website at www.mchs.gsacred.ab.ca, or by following the school on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. As well, be sure to subscribe to the, our YouTube channel by searching MCTV Morinville. The construction going on in the CTS area and the noise that makes it hard for classes nearby, Benoit Wallner was able to see if the, downside, if the downsides to this active construction site. The renovations of the CTS area here at MCHS have started and since have affected quite a few classes, primarily the cosmetology class and the fashion studies class, both taught by Ms. Sansano here at MCHS. 
like Miss Insano, she's been displaced. Um, so her uh, home ec, I guess the sewing part of it, her fashions class has had to readjust and move to a classroom. And it looks like it's nice in that classroom. Well, we had to obviously relocate. And so I've had the fortunate uh, opportunity to uh, use the science lab. So we are here in the cosmetology area, science lab room 202. And then for fashions, we're able to put um, all 25 fashion tables with the machines in room 103. With COVID, the cost of materials have gone up substantially. So the project was actually over budget by about a half a million dollars. So there has been some changes uh, in the sense that there won't be as much stainless steel in the kitchen as we hoped that there would be. But the overall design, the overall plan remains relatively the same. So not many changes that way. But we did have to cut a few, some money somewhere when it came to uh, being over budget. And stainless steel is one of the places. So in order to be able to enter the, the studio and the construction lab, um, they had to build some scaffolding that was safe so that nothing would fall on top of students as they're passing through. So those were huge safety concerns and they have that all under control there for us to be able to pass through. Otherwise, we'd have to go around outside. So it worked out. I'm getting a sense that the home ec nine and my fashion students in high school, they do like the smaller uh, intimate uh, room 103. Uh, we were told it was going to be a five to six month project. So they started in January. So this month, uh, our hope is that they're going to be done uh, by June. So everything will be up and ready to roll for the new school year next year. Um, but if it goes a little bit longer, uh, even if it went a little bit longer in the summer, we should be still good to go for the 2022, 2023 school year. Uh, with the new CTS area. Uh, so for the students, so uh, it's a remodernization. So actually for cosmetology, it's a full size salon. Um, there'll be 10 um, working stations. So in other words, 10 salon chairs with sinks. I think there's six uh, sinks. I looked at the blueprints very quickly, sorry. Um, there is a front waiting area. There's gonna be a till area. So at one point maybe service actually the community and have clients come in and students can do uh, hair, makeup and skincare. We move into the second semester here at MCHS. The modernization CTS area should be expected to be completed sometime before September of next year so that they should be ready for the 2022-2023 school year here at MCHS. This is Benoit Wandler reporting. Welcome back. Here with all the latest scores including the NBA, NHL, NFL and the NFL is our very own sports analyst Ty Norden. Thanks Luke. In the NHL, the Flames extinguished the competition in a devastating loss for the Blues in a 7-1 game. Next, the Wild went crazy and wiped out the Canadians in an 8-2 game. Next, the Knights cut the head off the Kraken in a 1-0 victory. Then the, the Avalanche rained down on the Blackhawks, winning 2-0. Finally, the Ducks flew over their competitors, the Bruins, in a 5-3 victory for the Ducks. Turning to the NBA, Manhattan's very own Knicks took on the Cavaliers and got knocked down in a close 93-96 game. Next, the Pacers got outpaced by the Pelicans in another close 113-117 game. Next, the Bulls barely took home the victory against the Thunder in a 111-110 game. Finally, the Jazz got outplayed by the Suns in a devastating 109-115 loss. Lastly, the NFL wildcard games are as follows. The Bengals back... Look, took on the Titans, and with a last-second field goal, they ended up winning the game, 19-16. Uh, to 10, 16. Next, the Bay's very own 49ers took on the Packers, drowning them out with a last-minute field goal, winning them the game, 13-10. to 10. Next, the Rams charged at the Buccaneers and won the game with another last-second field goal, and they finished the game 30-27. to 27. Finally, in the NFL, Kansas City... Chiefs didn't disappoint and won their game against the Bills 42 to 36. Having to work with an unfriendly co-worker can take a toll on companies uh, called, a company called Harmony's Workplace is now in town to help with that exact problem. Reporter William Weeks was able to find out what they're able to do to help. At Harmony in the Workplace, we really help employers um, connect with their employees in ways that maximize their potential. We do that through training and development with their teams, through leadership development. A lot of times employers are very, very good at uh, hiring for technical skills, but they may not be thinking about building their team with intention to things like organizational culture and company values. We make sure that the values that are stated on the walls really get lived out in the day-to-day -day way business is conducted. That's your organizational culture. 
I started my business in 2015 after finding myself unexpectedly unemployed, having been bullied from my previous position. And I started Harmony um, then so that other people wouldn't have to experience workplace abuse so that I could help really raise awareness about what is and what is not workplace abuse um, and really just help organizations avoid violence and harassment in the workplace. A lot of times when there's abuse happening at lower levels, employers may not even be aware of what's happening and the day-to-day -day way that uh, incivility that's left unchecked can turn into full-blown bullying. And so getting people on the same page, getting them all trained, getting your policies and procedures in place and having employees sign off on those as a condition of their employment, it just really helps to get everybody cohesive and working towards um, a standard that is set by leadership and adhered by everyone. Right now we're all going through a lot with all this COVID disruption. So really I just urge people to um, do what they have to do to take care of their psychological health. And that means uh, to be intentional about their self-care. And uh, employers are becoming more and more aware of that. If one thing this pandemic has done, it's really normalized the conversation around mental health. And that's not a bad thing. And it's allowing people to uh, be themselves and bring their whole selves to work. Yeah, right now I'm filling out my 2022 schedule. I've got some conference events coming up that I'm speaking at, um, lots of private training coming up. Really, if, you, if you'd if you like to book something for your organization, please get in touch. You can reach me at rweeks at harmonytraining.ca. My website is harmonyintheworkplace.com and you can always pick up the phone 780-460-1019. We'd love to help. Our final report of the season, Ella, reporter Ella Boissonneau brings us a piece on something close to us here at MCHS. Our underrated custodial staff who work incredibly hard to keep our school clean even through the tough times of the pandemic. Let's take a look. Keeping an entire school clean is a big job and it's thanks to Maxwell Crane and the family business he started. I've been working in MCHS for 16 and a half years. Well, my dad called me up at my other job and told me he was opening a business doing this so I said sayonara folks and I came to work with him. I was very familiar with custodial work because uh, I had uh, seven years of experience before I even uh, came to Alberta. We started out with MCHS and then we got what used to be Vanier. We also got GH Primo and we did have Notre Dame for a while. I usually work just in the summer so this is my first year being in the day. There are lots of positives and negatives when you're doing custodial work, as well as some interesting treasures that have been found. Um, I like that I get my mornings off because I come in around 2.30, 3 o'clock normally. Positive would be uh, not very many co-workers. You can pretty much do whatever you want in your section as long as you get your work done. You have to put in a more than an eight-hour day. I mean, say, our days start sometimes at three in the morning. Negatives would be if you work Monday to Friday, like with my full-time job, I'm not off till 10, 1030 at night. There's definitely a lot of yucky things that happen here that you have to clean up. So you have to have a bit of a strong stomach. There's schools I found an iPad or a tablet, but you usually bring them into the office. I found a few rings that were like really wedged in underneath things. Although the custodians don't seem appreciated enough, they say the little things you do with your day-to-day -day actions count. It's just, it's neat cleaning for your old high school since my graduating years down the hall. And um, I really enjoy working here and the students and teachers are all wonderful people. i tell you what I thought was interesting in, at MCHS was the fact that I felt that MCHS has a very community spirit. And the staff and the students that participate in all of these, they're amazing. I mean, they, they just live here. They, they live and die for MCHS. And certainly, and as that energy, as that enthusiasm is the, the thing that certainly energizes me to, and gives me the joy of being here, really. I like to uh, express appreciation a great big thank you to you and to all the staff here at MCHS 
and also my workers. We are very thankful for our custodians here at MCHS. So let's demonstrate that by helping out and keeping the school tidy. For MCTV News, Ella Boissano reporting. And that's it for the season 28 finale of MCTV News. Join us again next semester to see what the grade nines, the grade nines take over the show and take over the reins and attempt to run the show. So how do you think you did on finals? I think I did pretty good. That's yeah. good. Uh, I think I might have done a little bit worse than I normally do, but that's all right. Yeah, just as long as you are, were able to get them done. Yeah. So from all of us, uh, just when you think things are going smoothly here at MCTV News, we put together a blooper reel for you. From all of us at MCTV News, I'm Will Campo. And I'm Luke Robinson. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> oh, oh my. <laughs> the Canadian Federal... Sorry, that was really slow. I'm sorry, that was my fault. And, and, okay, that was going way too fast. Welcome back, here with all the latest scores, including the NHL... What is that word? Preseason. Oh! Thanks, Braden, right? Do I continue? Well, I don't know if I continue. Yes. Yeah. In the majors yesterday, the Houston... <laughs> Montreal with sun and clouds at... Uh... <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. This month in film, there's a wide number of movies being released with titles such as Marvel Studios Internals, Flinch, Flinch Clifford the Big Red Dog. Welcome back. Usually at this time of year, temperatures are expected to begin to drop below zero, but luckily we're not in next. Flinch, Cliff, Flinch, the Cliff, or the Vic. Can we just roll it around? Hello, and welcome to another episode of MCTV News. I'm your host, Luke Robinson. Uh, the uh, thing wasn't going. A new release from former lead Zeppelin, main sting, sting, singer Robert Plant and Ashron Krauss, Rise the Roof and the Bridge by String. Stung. Sing. Yeah. Nine in Winnipeg, six in Toronto with sun and cloud. Ooh. <laughs> oh, can you do it again? Amplify and the MCHS class at, oh, the MCTV class at. For all From all of us, us at, at MCTV, MCTV News, I'm Dylan Weiss. And I'm Ben Wolf. It's <laughs> just my name, I'm blue.